Well, if it isn't slapper after slapper after slapper, I think, I'm pretty sure at this point, in these last few videos, I have re-upped in my new game with every hitter in my catalog. <laughs> Be it a pizza, a subway, or something else. And tacos are to come next. But in the meantime, today, we need a double meat BMT Subway Slapper. Many Miss Vickies. Salt and Vinnies, many sauces, and a 15 weird questions featuring a Pepsi with alcohol in it. Because I'm not going to lie, I'm half in the sack. So let's do it. I'll meet you there. Come on in. And let's have a time. All right, yo, what's really good with y'all? Like I said in the intro, it's a bunch of things. A couple drinks under the inf, it's all good, but Subway, Slapper, Chip, Slapper, Questions, Slapper. So let's get to it. Here's the thing. First things first, before questions, I just need to do one thing with y'all is chipping a sandwich. We need to do this. We need to, together, adhesive glue some ranch, right? Because we know that these corporations, even though you requested many sauces, it's not saucy enough for a saucy guy. That's right. So ranch, hidden val, a little bit of hot sizzy. Just Frank's. Frank's red hot. And then on each sandwich, it isn't a Subway sandwich unless you're including the crunch of the chips. Now these are my own procurement. I procured these uh, at a store uh, that wasn't Subway prior to the Subway coming to me. And that's why I have so many of them. They're not in a small bag. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna enjoy one of the best types of meals in this muck game. Look at that. Double meat eclipsing, eclipsing the vegetation. And you can hear my ice in the background, my ice maker. That's for real, but we need that. And uh, we're going to smash a delicious sub. And we're also going to answer 15 off kilter questions from the internet so have you ever lied to a priest preacher or holy man that's a holy situation right there i'll say this One hundred percent. No, I haven't because I am not of the church. I wasn't raised religious, and uh, I've never been in a situation where I would have to lie to one of those types of people. Question two, have you ever borrowed something and just haven't returned it yet? In commas, is it considered stealing if you plan on returning it? Double meat, beautiful. Subway. I'll say this. 
I've never borrowed something with the intent to not return it. Is that to me equals like manipulative stealing, which I would never do. I respect people's property and respect what they had to do to get said property and how they appreciate said property. And, uh, how my taking of their property would ultimately negatively affect their energy. Like they would be pissed off. I'll say this in the brackets. Is it considered stealing if you plan re on returning it? I'll say this. Any person who ever smoked weed or was like a burnout you didn't plan it and you always want to return it, but you never anticipated stealing the lighter in the circle. When you're smoking weed in the circle, the lighter goes around and for some reason the person is like, I lost my lighter again. And you're like, oh, that sucks. And they're like, yeah, I wonder who has it. And then you go in your pocket and you're like, oh, <laughs> I have it. Because you unconsciously, subconsciously just took it at random. So you return it. That's, a, that's how I feel about this question. Third question. Have you ever opened a rewrapped present that had your name on it? I've never done that. I never broke into a present that was dedicated towards me. And come the day of supposed to open, you know, situation, reopened it. relative to my lack of ability to just be patient and wait. I'd rather open it, I would always rather open it fresh and have the excitement in front of the person who got it for me because that's like a wholesome moment in life. The moment of somebody who thought about you who you are and what you would appreciate. And then you get to explode with energy and they get to feel that through them because they thought deeply about you. I would never compromise that energy because that is one of the most special things in life of giving a gift and that gift being exactly what that person wants and that speaks volumes to the person it's like I thought about you I know who you are I consider you and then it's a validation their explosive response to the gift is a valid a validated return of like you get me and thank you so much for understanding me so, no, I have never done that. Hero or villain for a day in brackets. And what would you do?
to be honest. I choose villain. Because my nature as a human is to be more hero. I gravitate towards the positive. And the heroish agenda. So therefore, I want to understand, I want to understand the villain mindset. So that's why I would choose villain, because I want to understand the villain mindset. As someone who defaults to hero and positivity and wants like goodness and greatness and positivity in the world to understand the other side, the evil, the negative. I would choose that so that I could have that understanding. Next question. Would you rather be alive and alone? Pretty much my current nature in a sense. Or about to die with a group of friends? 100% alive and alone. Because friends, especially if I'm, if I'm about to die, it doesn't matter if you're alone or with friends or whoever when you're about to die. Dying is an, is an alone thing. It's just you. You're going. Like, you're dying. And uh, to die alone is just exactly what it is. Like, you're alone regardless, like, re relative of friends or not. Um, so I'd rather be alive and alone because alone I find a lot of solace in my lonesomeness. Because I don't have exterior shitty vibrations and opinions like I get to just exist in myself and be alive um dying with friends here's the thing about friends there's a there's a very very few friends that are authentically your friend most people are trying to get something from you or fake it till they make it like, it's just, it's very rare to find an authentic rider. In this world that we live in. So, there's that. Next question. Whenever you ask someone... How have they been doing? Do you really want them to tell you the truth? Super interesting and funny that that came up in these questions because I didn't <clears throat> even look at these questions beyond the first two. I just knew that the first two felt energetically dope to me. So this is why I made this video. Um, that's cool that that question exists. Some people know. I'll be honest. Some people, it just, it's formalities. You know, some people in your life, you have to maintain with formalities like that. But some people you truly care about. And that question is very interesting because I just had a message with a friend Someone I consider like a soulmate to me uh, that I met actually through YouTube. They found me for, through, through YouTube and we hung out in real life a bunch of times and uh, we connect. We've talked a lot.
in messages. And uh, I reached out to them just tonight, actually, and they responded back with like, like a canned, like a canned answer, like like a canned question, like a like a how have you been? And I was like, yeah, no, 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 like we don't do that. We don't do that here. Like you and I are deeper than that. Like ask me the most fucked up thing in your mind. Like I want. I never want our relationship relationship to resort to standardized canned bullshit. You and I are solies. Like I want you to always ask me the hard questions. And I want to be able to ask you the hard questions. And when I said that, They were like, oh my God, for sure, 100%, you're right. Like, and that's the thing is like, <laughs> relative to that question of like, how you've been doing, like, that's a canned question. First and foremost, I don't even want the canned question, but if you're going to ask me a canned question, I don't want a canned answer. I want a fucking authentic, real answer. I want to really know. I want to really know. Hey, man. Thanks for asking. I'm just barely surviving. Or, hey, man. Thanks for asking. I'm doing fucking incredible. I'm doing amazing. It's, it's different now. I, I got out of my shit state and I'm like, I'm thriving. I want real answers with people who I fuck with. You know, I don't want everyday answers. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, next question. Have you ever dropped food on the floor and then picked it up and eat it? Pretty sure I've done it on this channel. What do you think? Of course I believe in the five second rule. Next question. Ever had to run from the police? Yes, I have. And I've successfully made it. Back in the day. Egging cars. When I was in my teens. Would you rather know when you're going to die or how you're going to die? Easy answer. When. When means I can start living ridiculously accordingly to the time frame. How means nothing. I can't control how. How is inevitable. And if it's terrible, I can't change it. At least with when, I can manipulate my actions relative to the time, right? How? The thing with how is like, when is how? How could be, it's still a mystery. I'd rather live ridiculously purposeful and be out of control and do all the things knowing when. And act accordingly 
intentionally up to that point? Are you keeping a really big secret from someone? Mm. I want to say no. I don't have any like interpersonal relationships that have like a detrimental big secret, but I will say this, this channel and the existence of it is kind of a big secret to a lot of people around me. Like familial ties. But I don't really view it as a secret because I don't intend for them to ever even know about it or understand it. Like I... I, I I feel like secrets weigh on you when you want somebody to know it, in a way. And I don't give a shit if these people close to me know it or not. You know what I mean? Have you ever been outsmarted by another person? Of course. That's just part of life. No direct example, but 100%. Would you ever take a lie detector test with a loved one asking questions? Absolutely. 100%. Um, I come from a family that is, and I'm very privileged and lucky to have it, very accepting. Between my sisters, my mom, my dad. I really couldn't say anything. <laughs> On a lie detector test. That would throw them off. I've also been so... Outwardly weird. My entire life. <laughs> that like... Almost nothing would surprise them. You know what I mean? I and mean, they know who I am. If I said something crazy weird about myself that was like really under the surface, I think they would recognize it in themselves to be like, yeah, I'm fucked up too, kind of. But I wouldn't <laughs> say it out loud. So that's what it is. Would you rather ask a question someone doesn't want to answer or give an answer? To someone that doesn't want to hear. Mm, probably ask a question that someone doesn't want to answer. Because they could just cut it off and that's the end of it. Whereas if I'm going to answer a question that someone doesn't want to hear. It's, it's just like me trying to impart some sort of wisdom or idea and they're just like fuck you. Like I'm out. Like fuck. Like I'm done. It's just like it, 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 it's futile. Would you rather sit in snow while it's falling or dance in the rain? Well, I have experience with both because I've both danced in the rain and sat in snow when it's falling. And I'll tell you this. Sitting in snow when it's falling. is so peaceful. As a Canadian in Thunder Bay. It's happened to me so many times. You're in your outfit. You're out playing, doing things, snowboarding, tobogganing, GTing down a hill. The skies open up and these flakes, these flakes, they just start falling. And they're so beautiful. They're both, they're all unique. And they just, they just barely touch you. And they melt and they go to the ground and they accumulate. It's, it's angelic. It's so beautiful. It's, it's. 
for those who live in hot climates, it's one of the best things of, of life. I swear to if you've never experienced like winter, winter is terrible and hard and really rough most of the time, but there is a certain beauty found and associated with winter. On a fairly warm, you know, minus seven kind of night, it's snowing and it's so soft. It's amazing. It's actually amazing. Rain to me just feels kind of like, uh, it's, like it's abrasive. It hurts, you know, it's piercing. Do you like kids? I do. I do. Kids are dope. Not my own. Other ones that are cool and well adjusted and not shittily behaved. Those kids I, I fuck with. Do you want to be buried or cremated? I've always said cremated. I never believed in standard God. And I just thought to myself, burn my fucking body and if there's anything in here that will transcend, it doesn't matter if my body's here or not. But as time has gone on, I want to say... I almost want to be buried because I want this physical structure to be reincorporated into the matter of the earth. I don't want it to be preserved though. Like I don't want to be buried in a casket. I want to be buried. I just want my body to just get thrown in, a, in, in soil. That's like not even deep. You know what I mean? Like I want, I want to be eaten by the worms. <clears throat> I want to reconstitute the earth cuz i'm i'm part i'm i'm particle matter of this earth are you afraid of the dark fuck no i used to be as a kid but not anymore i actually have a sleep mask and it's like because i'm so up in the night i usually fall asleep with like the early like the break of dawn and shit and it's like i need i need the dark to fucking fall asleep so no i'm not afraid of the dark are you at this moment romantically interested in someone who doesn't think of you in that way? No, not at all. Definitely not. Have you ever been arrested? Uh, I've been detained. We know that on this channel. How many people have you slept? <laughs> How many people have you slept with? This is a confrontational question when asked by someone you're in a relationship with, so be prepared. From the time that we get involved with with each other, it should just be from now till later. Like your past and my past are only going to toxify our minds. Like, so it's like when I get in new relationships or relationship or whatever, it's like I don't want to know shit about your past, and I hope that you don't want to know about mine because that's digging into a territory where it's. Um, it's just messing with your perception. It's like, how about we just operate from our newness together from here on out and see where this goes because we are currently this person. I hate when people are like, I want to know about your past. And I'm like, I don't want to tell you about my past. Like, I don't give a, my past is my, it's back there. It doesn't matter. Like, let's just move forward together in this and see if it is dope, like it's so stupid that I hate, I hated that shit. So anyways, um, I've been asked that how many people I've slept with and it's a lot. It's on, it's, it's uncountable to be honest. Uh, I, I've, I've even sat and thought about it, like tried to think about it and I start losing names. Like I, cause there's repeat names. There's doubles of, of people and, it's just like, I can't, 
I don't know the number, and I don't. It's, I don't give a fuck that it's a lot. I, I like that it's a lot. I think it's a, it's it's like it's great. It's a learning experience, and and it's cool. Like it's it is what it is. It's fine with me. Um, so yeah. What would you do after your boss fires you? <laughs> Depends on the situation. If it was like new or old, or there was like tumultuous energy building up. Because I've been fired by a lot of bosses, and sometimes it was just like, it was literally like, thank you. I'm so glad to not even work here anymore. I wish you the best. And then some bosses, it was like, fuck you. You're a fucking loser. I hate you. You're a piece of shit. And also, thank you, because I don't want to work here anymore, and I haven't wanted to work here for a long time. So some of them got my grace, and some of them got my distaste. And the distaste ones, I'm not going to lie, felt really the best. Have you ever purposely hurt someone just enough to make them scream when rendering first aid? No. Ew. What the fuck? What? Girl. What? No. When you do first aid, it's like a reactionary measure of like, oh my God, this person's fucked up and I need to help save them. In the best way possible. Ew. If you intentionally tried to make them hurt in a time of them being like, ah, and you being like, ah, you're a fucking demon. Last question. Are you afraid of robots? Yes. Of course I'm terrified of robots. I'd... And we're about to enter into a new age society of like AI motherfucking robots with like guns and motherfucking like we're about to be outdone by robots and it's tripping me and yes, I'm fucking terrified of robots. They are creepy. I don't like them and they shouldn't exist in terms of like being in power. <laughs> Real last video. Told you I was a little sauce. Banger after banger. Till the next one. Y'all know what to do. Don't fuck with robots. Till the next one. Eat good, live well, stay true, and don't hurt people when you're trying to bandage them up. Okay? A piece. Uh